Hello and welcome to another episode of Movie Thoughts. I'm your host, Dominic Tartamella, and how's everybody doing? Uh, I'm sitting here, uh, it's raining, it's thundering in New York, and I'm kind of bored. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do a podcast. I'm home. Uh, As I said in the last episode, which if you haven't checked out, I talked about Batman 89 and Batman Returns, the the two Michael Keaton, Tim Burton Batman movies, right? They get us ready for The Flash, which I'm going to be seeing tomorrow. Very excited about that. But I, I said yesterday, you know, I would like The Flash movie to be episode 60. So why not today, uh, why not uh, do an episode 59, and it's it's going to be a little obscure, this movie, all right? It's going to be a little... It's probably going to be the most obscure movie I've done on this podcast, um, I, I think. As far as older movies, it is an older movie, uh, as you see from the title. But uh, what triggered me to was the passing of one of the actors that stars in this movie, and that's Treat Williams, who is a familiar face. If you don't know the name, you can't. You'll, you'll know the face. He's been in so much stuff, uh, seemingly forever, the 71-year-old actor. He was in a motorcycle accident, tragically, and a fun actor, right? He's been a little bit of everything. He does serious. He's popped up in just a slew of TV shows and stuff like that. And stuff that uh, you may know him from, uh, Deep Rising is a movie, a popular movie that people know him from. Um, Prince of the City is a movie that's a good movie. Go check that out. It's a cop movie from the, believe, 80s, late 70s. I can't really remember the year. And he's been a slew of things. Like I said, he's been in uh, Deep End of the Ocean with Michelle Pfeiffer. Just, Just things that are coming to the top of my head. And some smaller roles here and there, but... Good actor. Uh, those remember those substitute movies where the um, the the fucking badass like under was he undercover cop and he starred in a couple of those, you know the shittier sequels and stuff like that. But you know, he, like I said, he did a little bit of everything. And the movie I'm going to be talking about today is a wacky one. Um, it's a movie that I don't even remember when I seen it. It had to be about. Uh, 12 years ago or something. This is something. It's it's in the, it's got to be in the double digits at this point. I don't even remember how I stumbled across. Actually, yes. Okay, so back about uh, years and years ago, me and my brother had uh, uh, we worked uh, in a business together. Okay, and not going to get into the details of all the the fun stuff that transpired there. For those close to me, you know. But on Sundays we would. Um, we would, uh, you know, because it was kind of a slower day and we were off the next day and, uh, you know, we were closed. So uh, halfway through the day when we had nothing to do and we were kind of getting ready to close shop, we would do like Sunday afternoon movies. <laughs> we would, in honor of those movies that you catch, you know, you used to catch on like uh, Channel 11 or, you know, whatever whatever station, you know, TNT or something. There used to be Sunday movie marathons and stuff like that. And so if we had time, we would do that. And I would make a list of the Sunday movies. And we watched a lot of, uh, you know, action movies and and just movies that I think because at this time I was getting like the Netflix envelopes. Uh, So I would get fucking whatever wacky movie. Sometimes we would spin off. So if we watched, let's say, Roadhouse, which I think we did watch Roadhouse uh, and go back to one of the episodes when I play an episode where me and my brother talk about Roadhouse because that's that's funny as well but when we did watch a movie like that we would go back uh, the following week and we would try to spin it off sometimes so if we watched you know Roadhouse or Patrick Swayze maybe the following week we'd watch Dirty Dancing or we'd watch uh, Point Break those we definitely watch Point Break and then maybe we'd spin it off to another Swayze movie or then maybe after that we'd spin it off to a Swayze uh, uh, a Keanu movie right make any sense so that's what we do for a while and we would just i would just find obscure movies that maybe uh the trailers seemed intriguing uh you know this was a time as i said i was using the netflix envelopes heavily so uh you know i'd get the discs and i would just uh would be like oh this one sounds good this one sounds ridiculous and that's when i stumbled across uh this movie from 1988 dead heat Okay, now if this is the first time you've ever heard of this movie, you know, 
if you want to pause it and look up this movie or whatever, or if I, I'm going to talk just about this movie in general. I'm not really going to be fucking, uh, you know, spoiler heavy. Although this movie is so ridiculous that spoilers with spoilers, without spoilers, it's not really going to make a difference. It's not going to really take your enjoyment away from this fucking bizarre film. But uh, the film stars Treat Williams, the late, great Treat, Treat Williams, who we just lost. And it stars a uh, comedian and actor and fucking bodybuilder at this time, Joe Piscopo. Okay, which Joe Piscopo, let me tell you something about Joe Piscopo. Joe Piscopo is a guy that just underrated, I think. Underrated, um, some of the movies, you know, he's been like un- underrated nowadays. I don't think back in the day because he was on SNL and he was on SNL at a time when like basically him and fucking Eddie Murphy were running shit. And, uh, you know, obviously that led to movie roles outside of SNL and he did films, uh, you know, notable films, Johnny Dangerously with my boy Keaton, uh, Michael Keaton. Uh, he did Wise Guys with Danny DeVito, which is a fucking funny movie. Wise Guys. If you've never seen Wise Guys with Danny DeVito and Joe Piscopo, really funny movie. My brother-in-law loves that fucking movie. And uh, he turned me on to it a while ago. And it's actually directed crazily. It's directed by Brian De Palma. Okay, Brian De Palma. Scarface, Carlito's Way, Dressed to Kill, fucking uh, The First Mission Impossible. Just like the great filmmaker, Brian De Palma, that did a comedy that is, is fucking funny. And, uh, you know, he starred in, also he starred in the movie Sidekicks, which I just recently acquired on 4K. Uh, uh, the, the, they had, like, a limited edition version, and I and I got I got it. It's a Chuck Norris movie that Joe Piscopo, I, I can't even, that's a whole nother podcast. I'm not going to talk about that. But my point is Joe Piscopo, uh, a funny fucking guy, right? Love the guy, and him and Treat Williams are in this film. Now, this film is is fucking bizarre. Uh, so it's basically, <laughs> there's a lot of fun little things about this film too. First of all, it's, so it's a, co- a cop movie, a buddy cop movie with zombies, if I have to describe that, but not conventional, uh, you know, eat, eat your brain zombies. Um, essentially the, one of the cops, they're cops. There's a there's a robbery in the beginning of the fucking movie. I was just, it's so funny because I was like, all right, I hadn't watched this movie in a while. Uh, I owned it on DVD, and then uh, about a year ago, they came out with a, a 4K of it, and so I got it because I was like, ah, I have to get that. That movie's so fucking ridiculous, and I haven't watched it in years. Me and my brother used to watch it, and just it's it's one of those movies. It's an hour and fucking twenty minutes. And it's like it goes by in a flash, and you and the best part is you understand nothing, uh, a, <laughs> as far as plot details. And that's what I mean about spoiling this movie. There really isn't much I can spoil for you. But what I'm trying to say is, I I was I want to do a podcast about this movie, and I said, you know what, it's perfect. You know, Treat Williams just died. Uh, this is a, an obscure movie from his past that we could talk about and kind of give him a little tribute with. And I was like, all right, I should probably watch the movie again because I haven't watched it in a while. And, like, I just watched it. Literally, the menu uh, is, is playing on my on my Blu-ray uh, in front of me right now. And, like, I, I didn't come away from this movie watching it again after all these years. Like, with any added, uh, you know, storyline or uh, details or, or knowledge about the movie. I mean, there's definitely a couple of uh, scenes that I remember that I might talk about, but, like, ridiculous. It just, it instantly, you instantly forget this movie after you watch it. And the the plot is just, so the plot is essentially like two cops, um, and then one of them dies, Treat William, in the beginning of the movie, and then, like, there's this, this, this doctor, or whatever, this guy who's bringing people back to life, so then they bring uh, Treat Williams back to life, and then he's essentially, like, this zombie cop, uh, and, like, but he's, you know, he's not hungry for brains or anything like that, he's just, like, rotting, he essentially could, like, take bullets and stuff like that, and it's, it's, I, I cannot stress enough, one of the most bizarre movies you'll ever see, and, like, it's not a good movie. I mean, I want to get I want to get that off off my chest right now. I want to get that out of the way. If if you're expecting a good movie, if you're going to watch this movie, uh, you're going to take my recommendation. It is not a fucking good movie. It's a, it's a terrible movie. 
Uh, but it is, it is fun. It is good. Terrible it is fucking cheesy. Terrible. One thing I will say the special effects in this movie, this is from 1988, as I said. So this is like, uh, you know, it's got practical effects in it. Like for the most part, they're pretty fucking good. They're pretty fucking good. There's some cool monster creatures and stuff like that. And, uh, it's, it works. You know, there's some, there's some gore in there and, and shit like that. The movie's also filled with Joe Piscopo. What well, two things from Joe Piscopo? Well, Joe, Joe Piscopo, one-liners like one-liner after the other one-liner, just bad jokes. Um, it's like so. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, I will say this: if you're gonna watch this movie, definitely have a couple drinks when you watch it, or smoke some pot if you do that, and enjoy this fucking film because <laughs> the one drink. drink Every time Joe Piscopo says a bad one-liner, a bad joke that doesn't land, and I love Joe Piscopo, but there's just a lot of stuff that comes out of his mouth that some of it, some of it's funny, other stuff just goes, just is a complete miss. Uh, I was I was listening to an interview and he did in, improvise some of the stuff, so that that's enjoyable as well. Also, the other thing Joe Piscopo does in this movie is he's fucking jacked. I don't know at what point I got to do better research on this next time uh, I talk about Joe Piscopo, but like Joe Piscopo, so this is 88, but like Joe Piscopo went from obviously being on SNL, being just, you know, a skinny guy, whatever, to like he was jacked at one point, like really working out. And he was on the cover, like muscle fitness and stuff like that. And, and in this movie, he's fucking jacked and like drink every time he's like unintentionally or maybe intentionally posing and flexing <laughs> because that's that's what goes on he's all oiled up and he's wearing like shirts that are really tight and a lot of scenes and he'll be in like the police station just um you know leaning against something but like flexing unintentionally kind of doing like the top gun checking the watch and flexing but yeah this movie oh man uh just just a lot of fun. As I said, the visual effects, you watch Treat Williams essentially like decompose as the movie goes on. And then at one point towards the end of the movie, he almost looks like a punk rock uh, version, zombie version of Treat Williams. I think it would have been funny if he had like a desire to eat, you know, people like an actual zombie, but they don't really go that route. But the decomposing stuff's funny. There's some fucking creatures in this. There's one scene that like this fucking pig zombie comes back I don't even know like that's what I mean about like not even know I just watched the movie and yet again I must have seen this movie a handful of times right and I just freshly watched it and I could tell you what the fuck went on in this movie as far as like the plot but it's it's all in good fun uh you know the the, the zombies and there's then there's like I don't even know what the I don't want to call them zombies but like ghouls uh, you know, and when they go after like Joe Piscopo and Treat Williams, they they have guns too, and they're using guns. It's it's weird. It's weird, right? Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the cast. So Treat Williams, Joe Piscopo, then you get fucking Darren McGavin, uh, Billy Madison's father, as you'd know him, right? Uh, more of the younger audience, oh, younger fucking me. Uh, that says I'm not young, thirty four years old. But yeah, that's, you know, for most common, uh, you know, for modern moviegoers, right? Then, of course, you know him as father in Christmas Story. He was uh, Kochak, the Night Stalker. And yeah, guy, fun. He's kind of like the villain. He pops up here and there. He's doing his thing. Also, Vincent fucking Price is in this movie. The legendary fucking ah, Vincent Price. Ah. I don't know. I got to work on my Vincent Price impression. But you know him. He does fucking... Guy starred in classic horror films, right? Also, um, did the voiceover in the Thriller uh, song by Michael Jackson, right? This is coming to your neighborhoods. I'm going to work on my Vincent Price. I've really never attempted a Vincent Price. Maybe next week I'll, I'll come back with one. But yeah, Vincent Price in one of his final movies, right? This is 88. I believe his final movie... I'm going to I'm going to just say as a legend. Thank God it wasn't this cuz the guy's a legend and thank God it wasn't this. Although he's he's hamming it up. He's doing his thing. He's you know giving little speeches at the end of this movie and it's it's good to see him uh you know the elder Vincent Price, but he his final movie I believe is Edward Scissorhands, which 
obviously he's the guy who created Edwards' hands, and he's like, yes, hands, yes, hands. That's that's the equivalent of my Vincent Price impression. It's basically him saying, yes, it's good. Things that he that he says in the flashbacks, those fucking weird flashbacks, in uh, Edwards' hands. But yeah, he's enjoyable in here, so you get him. This movie's directed by Mark Goldblatt, which... If you look into Mark Goldblatt, he's got an interesting career because he's a director, obviously, but he only really directed a few movies. He directed this. He directed, um, I was looking earlier, he directed the Punisher film from the early 90s with Dolph Lundgren, which, to be honest, I've never even fucking seen. Uh, He's done some TV shows, I believe, as well, but mostly... He's an editor, and it's it's you know he didn't really strike gold as as a director. Listen, not everybody's a great director and all that, but like he's edited some fucking he he's done some second unit direct. As I'm looking at it, he's done some, but his filmography, as far as like editing, I mean, just to name a few, uh, fucking Commando, you know that that. Arnold Schwarzenegger Commando, uh, RoboCop, second unit director. I could be fucking some of these up. But um, Terminator 2, he was an editor. Like, Terminator fucking 2. Universal Soldier, editorial consultant. The Last Boy Scout, uh, that was directed by Tony Scott. Just like True Lies. So he works with James Cameron a couple times. Uh, You know, then he did fucking Showgirls, which that movie is ridiculous. But, like, additional editor on The Rock, the Michael Bay film. Like, he fucking guys... Uh, a talented, uh, you know, editor. And, you know, he never, like, as I said, he never really struck gold with the uh, directing, but, listen, this movie is still fun. I see some bad boy stuff in there, too. So he's, 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 and then this movie, the interesting, more interesting thing about this movie now, so this is from 88, right? Um, And the funny thing about it, right, because when you watch it, it's essentially, um, like trying to be like a lethal weapon esque movie, right? It's like lethal weapon. It's like the, that buddy cop aspect of it is essentially trying to be a lethal weapon esque movie. And the fucking funniest thing about it is this movie uh, is written by the brother. So Shane Black is the guy who wrote Lethal Weapon, right? Nineteen eighty seven. This is written by the brother of Shane Black. <laughs> it's almost, it's like perfect. And like, the, the, you know, his name is Terry Black. I'll say his name. And he's gone on to do, you know, some Tales from the Crips and stuff like that. He's he's a working writer. He's done some stuff. But like, it's just funny because like, wh- how did this transpire? Uh, you know, as far as like, he, did he get the idea after he saw his brother's movie or read his brother's script? And he say, well, this is a fucking... I want to put a horror spin on it. And it, he makes this ridiculous movie, which, as I said, not really a co- cohesive plot. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of things that happen. It, it seems, so the movie's an hour and 20 minutes. And as I said, it goes by in a flash. But it seems like there's a lot of stuff cut out of it. I got to check, like, the bonus features. Because now in this new edition, this newer edition, there's actually bonus features uh, with maybe deleted scenes and shit like that. So I want to check. I know there's an audio commentary. So it, but it seems like this movie's heavily cut. Whereas you're watching it and then like the, this crazy action happens. And then, uh, you know, you're watching it and then <laughs> a certain character, I'm just going to fucking say it. All right. A certain character. At one point there's a scene and this is like the ridiculousness in this movie where like Joe Piscopo separates from Tree Williams. He's like, all right, I got to go, you know, do this or whatever. I'll see you later. And then, like, the next time you see Joe Piscopo, out of nowhere, he's just upside down, dead, in a fish tank. Like, his face, he somebody tied his feet to, like, the ceiling, and his head is just in. Like, that right there is exactly what you're getting with this movie. You're getting, as I said, a lot of bad one-liners, uh, muscled up Joe Piscopo, uh, people coming back to life, ghouls with guns. I mean, that could have been the title in the movie, Dead Heat. I mean, there's even a fucking, because it was the 80s, so, like, they had a fucking theme song for every movie, like, r- written specifically in the movie. There's even a fucking song 
called Dead Heat that is in like the end credits. I think it was in the titles too, but like ridiculous. Uh, I don't know. I don't. This movie is one of those fucking films that just went under the radar, is forgotten. It's so funny because it came out in '88, and like, when did I don't know? I was looking before. It was like a few months after something like Beetlejuice came out, and like I wonder if they thought maybe they would have not that you know it was taken away from that or anything like that. The movie is obviously in production. But, like, I wonder if they thought they would have a bigger hit on their hands because of something with similar subject matter, fucking horror, kind of comedy, cross... I don't even know. It's horror, it's comedy, it's action. It's got, Honestly, it's got everything. But it doesn't really... Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really hit all the marks. <laughs> as, as you'll see when you watch it. But I think it's worth a watch. I think it's worth a watch, especially... <laughs> In, in honor of uh, Treat Williams and one of his more obscure films. I saw, I actually followed Joe Piscopo on um, Instagram. And he had uh, shared, after Treat Williams passed away, he shared a picture of them, you know, from this movie. So that was nice. And I don't know if they kept up as friends and stuff like that. But they, listen, there's not every movie's good, right? Not every movie's good. It's It's so fucking bizarre. I don't even know what else to say about this movie. Just, just check it out. This is a, this is gonna be, this is a quick little episode, uh, just to you know, get me to sixty tomorrow. So I figured, why not, right? Why not talk about a stupid fucking movie? As I watch the menu and they show clips, it's, it's just such a confusing movie. The effects, the effects though, the effects are good. And it's kind of like a, I know they, they did what they do. The movie fucking Rip PD with uh, Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds, right? And that was another fucking flop. I think that was based on a comic. But it's kind of similar subject matter, I guess, to that. But, I don't know, they were going after, like, ghouls and shit, right? I mean, this is... this. Even the ending of this movie is so abrupt and weird. And uh, how many... Just drink drink every time somebody gets brought back to life, too. It's, like, it's a movie with no consequences, uh, it, honestly though, like, I wonder why, probably cause nobody, you know, cause it didn't make, and didn't really make money, it didn't have good critical reception, but I'm surprised they didn't, this isn't an IP, or rather, scratch the IP, but this isn't something that a studio didn't try to remake, cause it's, it's got, like, potential, like, somewhere in here, and maybe with the script, the original script, which I never read, maybe there was something better, like, it could have been, a better movie. Uh, you know, but it is a fun little B fucking throwaway movie. Joe Piscopo, as I said, one of the unsung heroes of SNL and, and comedians and just a funny guy, especially at this time. Peak Joe Piscopo. He's jacked out of his mind. He's funny in it. And then Tree Williams playing more of the straight man. I'll tell you how ridiculous this movie is. Just to, to, to like a sum it up in one line. Tree Williams' name in this film is Roger Mortis like rigor mortis like the blood settling when you're dead his name is Roger Mortis like officer Roger Mortis it's not like a they don't call him Roger Mortis as a nickname and there's a lot of bad like dialogue too like another drinking moment drink every time like Joe Piscopo goes into like a serious speech that makes absolutely no sense there's a, they, they, in the beginning of this movie there's a whole joke because uh, they're speeding in a car. And I think Joe Piscopo says something along the lines of like, oh, you can't be a good cop or you're a dead cop or something like that. And then later, like after this happens, um, this whole thing where he dies and he comes back and he's like zombified or whatever the fuck. He's like, well, remember I used to say that? And he's like, you can't be a good cop unless you're a bad cop. Like, because I think Treat Williams is all down because he's fucking decomposing. And he's like, well, now's your chance to prove him wrong. Like, what? What does that even mean? What, how is that even going to help the guy? The guy's still decomposing. He's a zombie. Ooh, what the fuck does that even mean? But there's a lot of what the fuck moments in this film. But that's it, guys and gals. That's Dead Heat. Rest in peace. Treat Williams. Uh, check out the movie. I hope that, if anything, because I doubt, I, I think 9 out of 10 people have, have never even fucking heard of this movie, let alone seen it, but... I think it's worth a watch. As I said, some drinks, some booze, maybe some marijuana, um, and play a little game. 
So I hope it gets somebody at least to watch it if you haven't watched it. And that's the podcast for today. As I said, uh, check out the other podcasts, um, the Batman episode and stuff like that. Flash is tomorrow. So I'm going to fucking record that episode as soon as I see it. And uh, hopefully it delivers on all fronts. I'll be light with spoilers and all that shit. But yeah, check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Dom Solo Reels, where I publish my fucking stuff on there and whatever the hell. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Have a good night.